What do you think would happen if I took the two most diametrically opposed Pokémon and fused them? <clears throat> uh, this. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be sculpting this. Now you see recently, I have become alarmingly fixated with Pokemon fusions, and of course, I will be using you as a method to validate my obsessions. Now, if you have no idea what Pokemon Infinite Fusion is, it's a fan game that allows you to fuse almost any two Pokemon together to create something entirely new and unique. This ranges from the most badass Pokemon designs I've seen in over a decade, as well as designs so cursed that I might end up on a watch list if I save them to my computer. Now, enough of that silly little thing we call context, let's get started on this sculpture. The first thing we need to do is build an armature for this cursed little Pokemon child. I'll use some pliers to bend the wire into what looks like a horse standing upright, and once I'm satisfied with the overall shape, I'll use a tiny bit of aluminum foil to bulk out Mewtwo's thunder thighs. With the foil on, it's time to mix up the color for Mew Carp, or um, Magic 2. Magic Carp 2? You know, I really don't know what to call him, so drop some name suggestions in the comments, and if you guys want, I'll do a community poll later with the most popular names. Which means that for better or for worse, you can choose his name through the power of democracy. I can only hope it doesn't end up being something ridiculous like Mr. Bubbles. Anyway, back to the craft. I'm slowly building up his general shape and marking where I want his tail to start. From there, I can add tiny bits of clay until he has a good pair of knees and hips that wouldn't dare tell a fib. As I was building up his lower body, I tried smoothing it as much as I could with my tools, but any lumps or scratches will later be erased with the help of some acetone and isopropyl alcohol. Now his upper body is nowhere near finished, but his lower half is good enough for us to mix up a new color for his tail. Once I stop messing around and actually mix the clay together, it comes out as a very pretty pastel yellow. Then I can use the space I carved out earlier to act as a guide for filling in his tail. Once I get his tail reasonably smooth with the very advanced technique of using my finger, I give his arms a very thin layer of clay. Although I would love to get more experience sculpting muscle, Mewtwo has arms as thick as a toothpick, so really, there's not much muscle for me to define. Oh, and while I was filming this part, it was actually Easter, so I took a quick peep break, and if you don't like peeps, I don't want to hear a peep out of you. <laughs> Uh, but I quickly got back to finish his arms and start working on his pecs. Mewtwo has a really cool armor-looking-esque chest that connects all the way around his back, so I used a long strand of clay and blended it in. Shortly after, I realized I made his pecs way too big, which was just a complete mystery, as I don't know why I would be thinking about big, beefy pecs. <clears throat> so I shaved them down until they were the right size and blended in all of the edges. It was at this moment where the body shape was coming along pretty okay, but I realized the start of his tail and his hips were a bit too low. Mewtwo is like 75% leg, so I added some height to both areas to make his proportions a little bit more accurate. Now this looks a whole lot better, and with his legs done, we can move on to working on the last part of his lower half, his feet. Luckily for me, Mewtwo only has two toes, which I made by just rolling up some tic-tac-shaped pieces of clay and blending them into his legs. Once those were blended in, I added his weird ball ankle things to both of his legs and I could start on his hands. Now after I conjured the first set of hands out of thin air, I realized that we had a small problem. Or well, a big problem because these were far too big for his body. So what I ended up doing was making smaller wire frames and attaching those to his arms before adding any clay. This helped me size down his hands a lot and this time they actually look the correct size. Instead of fingernails, Mewtwo 
who has ball joint fingers, which was quite easy to add, but a little challenging to blend in without squashing them. After all of his fingers were attached, I used a little bit of acetone to remove any fingerprints or scratches. Up next, I added the wire frame for his fishy tail, and instead of using the pastel yellow, I'm going to be using the red color instead. I'll blend this in with some scales later, so don't worry about that for now. What you should be worrying about is the Mewtwo thigh debacle of 2023. Now that I say that out loud, that event has probably already happened in a few dark dark corners of the internet, but anyway, it was at this point that I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with his legs. I knew I definitely wanted to change the original design and add my own twist to it, so at first I wanted to connect back to Magikarp's scale design, but uh, it ended up looking like trash. <laughs> The scales didn't look right at all, and they weren't even in the slightest, and after this I tried a few more designs, but none of them worked. So I ended up wasting a bunch of time on designs for his thighs, only to never use them and have to redo a bunch of work for no reason. <laughs> However, there was one silver lining, and that is I ended up really liking how these cutout scales looked, so I added them to where his tail meets his stomach and his back, and I also used them to blend the two colors of his tail together. Now with his body almost fully complete, we can start working on his head. I started by making the inside of his mouth first, and then baking it to lock in the shape. However, my first try at making his mouth just didn't look good enough for me, so I decided to make it a second time. This time around, it looked a lot better, and I began adding clay around it to form the rest of his head. Once I had the general shape down, I plopped the head onto his body and did my best to blend it into his neck and also give him a perfect, handsome Squidward jawline. Once I felt he was handsome enough, I smoothed his bald ass head with some alcohol and started making, baking, and attaching the yellow fins all around his body. During this part, I also baked some very soulless eyes and attached them to his head. Then I added some more detail to the tail since it felt a little bit empty and to smooth out those lines I carved on, I used a little bit more alcohol. Now with the head on, I could finally add Mewtwo's neck umbilical cord thing and I blended it in as best as I could. Next was probably my favorite part of the entire process, which was just seeing how this guy changed from a derpy little fish creature to a savage water monster just by adding some clay around his eyes. If you've ever attempted to draw eyes, you know how hard they are to get symmetrical, and I assure you it was no easier to get them to look right in 3D. However, once I did get them right, I could add Magikarp's absurdly luscious lips and stick two pieces of wire in his face for the first bake. Now that all of the clay is cured, the only part left to work on are his whiskers that are blowing in the wind, and with that, Mewcarp or Majimu or whatever you guys decide to name him is officially done, and now we must craft a special base for something so based. <laughs> Now to achieve this, I decided to make the base a giant, violent, spinning whirlpool. For this, I only need to use one type of blue colored clay, and then I can create a general swirl pattern on the base. This is just to help me decide the direction that the water will spin, and when I have it mapped out, I can then add some waves that will be splashing over the edges. So I don't waste any clay, I use a little bit of aluminum foil so I can build up the general figure of the waves. Once they're on, I cover them in clay and connect all of the swirling together with my tools. Now when the entire base is covered in that texture, I'll use a paintbrush and some alcohol to smooth everything out and remove any rough, crumbly pieces of clay. Once everything was nice and smooth, I attached him to the base, and from there I could blend the base into his feet a little bit by making the water splash against him. Now usually when we see Mewtwo in an action pose, he's charging up Shadow Balls or Aura, but because we fused him with a fishy friend in each hand, I'm gonna have him charging up a Whirlpool attack. Thank you. 
In an effort to make the water attack he's charging up look even more aggressive and realistic, I pre-baked some small water droplets in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. Then I can poke them into the charged attack to give it as much movement as possible. Once I do the same thing to the other hand, I bake everything for the last time and break out some UV resin to use as the glossy top coat for all of the water. At first, I just used a silicone brush to move it around, but that was taking far too long, so I ended up switching to a paintbrush rather quickly. At first, I debated on using Gloss Mod Podge for this step, but after a few test runs, it just looked like trash, and the UV resin overall made the water look more… wet. Once all of the resin was on the water, I mixed up some instant snow powder with Gloss Mod Podge and smeared it on the tips of most of the waves to mimic some sea foam. And with that last detail on, it's finally time to show off what might be the dumbest Mewtwo fusion anyone has ever sculpted. And as always, I have to extend my gratitude to the absolute chads over on Patreon. My incredible DIYers with a new addition to the squad, Nubmark, my amazing crafters with a new addition, Timothy, as well as my glorious artificer, Josh K. If you like what I do and you want to be bestowed an official title like DIYer or crafter, as well as acquiring all of these amazing <laughs> benefits, consider supporting me over on Patreon. As always, thank you for watching until the end. I link to the Pokemon Fusion Calculator that I used for this video in the description, so go make some fusions of your own and comment down below any that you would like for me to sculpt in the future. Don't forget to vote later when I post the community poll that will decide this guy's name, and with that, I will see you guys in the next video.